<laughs> so, you want to make your millions in commercial property. Well, let me tell you one thing, it's not going to be easy. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how I do it and how you can use some of my strategies to get started in property. I'm going to start to reveal my property secrets. You'll see how I identify properties that I think I can turn around and how I turn them around to get them working for me and making me money. Don't worry, this video isn't a property guru sales pitch. I'm not going to scam you out of your hard-earned cash. I'm not going to lure you to a plush hotel and ask you to sign up for a course. I'm not even going to try and flog your book. All you have to do is watch and learn from my experience. My group companies regularly outperform the market because we operate a very simple but very successful business model. One of my most lucrative property investment strategies involves what I call underperforming basket case commercial property assets. What makes an asset underperforming? Well, it could be a property with a recent void. That's property speak for it's empty or doesn't have a tenant. Or it could have a poor management team. That's property speak for they just can't be arsed. Or it could be due to depressed market conditions. This could be a general economic slowdown or short-term uncertainty because of an event like a general election or a referendum. It could even be a result of investors losing favour in a particular sector of the market. So, getting back to my basket case properties, they have the potential to generate significant value through clever asset management. You have to take a risk to make money, but you also need to mitigate that risk. I'm going to show you exactly how we do that in this video. We'll look at the first stage of my formula. I'll explain the downsides and pitfalls so you can avoid them. Warren Buffett's number one rule in business is never lose money. His number two rule is never lose money. Remember this rule. If you apply it to commercial property and maximise your upsides quickly and efficiently, you'll soon be on the path to success. Right, let's get the boring bit out of the way first. Property can be a risky business and I don't want to promise you the earth. If you do this wrong, you will lose money. There's no doubt about it. You have to mitigate your risk. Do your research, do your homework and try to learn as much as you can about property before you jump in. Ask the property professionals, read books and have a look online. Before you do or sign anything, take professional advice from a qualified property professional like a chartered surveyor and always, always, always use a specialised property solicitor. Remember, I'm not offering you bespoke property or legal advice and I recommend that you always get professional advice and help before entering into any transactions. Okay, so back to me and my success. My team and I are commercial property investors, entrepreneurs and asset managers. We source an asset managed property to maximise its value and therefore investment returns. If you've not seen my previous video, stop right there and go back and watch it. Do it right now and it'll explain everything. There's a link in the comments to make it super easy for you. So what's our goal? We want to transform problem basket case assets into stable, low-risk investment products. Sometimes we keep them, but often we sell them on. My successful business model has four steps and they are 1. Stabilisation of assets 2. Capital improvement 3. Amortisation 4. Reinvestment To make explaining my methods even easier, I'm going to give each section its own video. I'll take you through a step-by-step -step guide to my business model and show you exactly how we get this done. Today, let's look at stabilisation of assets. I'm going to break it down into smaller chunks of aggressive leasing, innovative marketing solutions and cost-cutting measures. The biggest problem we have when buying distressed assets or basket cases is dealing with the unknown. We aren't going to be handed all the crucial paperwork we need. We know there'll be huge gaps, there will be holes in the rental history, there will be arrears, the buildings will probably be in need of repair and tenants, if there are any, will be fed up and dissatisfied. So where on earth do we start with these issues? Well, I've always found the best way is to use a personal touch. As soon as we decide we're buying a property, we have a chat with the tenants. We go and see them, discuss their problems and find solutions. We build a rapport with them and as soon as all the legal side of things is wrapped up, we'll meet the tenants again to go through it all. It costs nothing to keep tenants up to date, but what a difference it can make in a professional relationship. 
So what happens if we take in a property and there aren't any tenants? That's when we turn to aggressive leasing. On average, it can take up to six months to get a tenant for a commercial property. All our cash flows and models have a void of six months. If you cut this down to three months, you've outperformed your business plan by a whopping 50%. And the best way to do this, we employ top agents to find tenants, but we also do many lettings ourselves. Here are some tips to remember. Keep a database. Yes, we use agents to do leasing for us, but we also have a database of tenants we've previously let to and potential tenants who have made an inquiry to rent a unit. Let's say my team are at a networking event and I'm chatting to someone whose business is doing well, it stands to reason they may well expand their business and need bigger commercial premises. Or perhaps someone is looking to downsize as part of their restructuring process. We can help them with that. If we sell an investment property, we still keep in touch with former tenants. At some point, they will want to expand or relocate and we will be the first port of call. Remember the name, Dress Up America. They were existing tenants who wanted to expand. First though, I want to tell you about Project Contempo. We purchased a vacant building in Mill Road Industrial Estate in Linlithgow, West Lothian. We planned to refurb the existing building and split it into trade counters. In the adjacent yard, we planned to build our Project Contempo development. This is a hugely ambitious and revolutionary project. Have a look at the links below and you'll find out why we were so excited about it. And by the way, it wasn't just us who were excited. There was a huge demand and a certain Donald Trump even wanted a piece of the action. Before buying it, we were going to split the main building into trade counters. But while we were applying for planning permission, Dress Up had started speaking to us about finding larger premises. We decided to let the building to Dress Up as it would mean our capital outlay in splitting up the building had been substantially reduced. This process is called pivoting. If you want to know more about pivoting, you're in luck. Check out my earlier video and my Speak Like Shaft series. It was a win-win deal for us and Dress Up. We agreed a 10-year lease and didn't have such a big outlay. And they had shiny new premises with excellent transport links to both Glasgow and Edinburgh. Crucially, they had a much greater capacity to allow the business to grow. This example shows the importance of keeping a database. Another way we aggressively lease is offering a finder's fee for a great tenant. Stay tuned, you could bag yourself £25,000. I'm totally serious, stay tuned to find out what you have to do. Let's look at a finder's fee. We attract great tenants by offering a finder's fee to agents and or incentives to employees if a suitable tenant is found by a specific date. We've used this strategy successfully on a number of occasions over the years. To see how this works, let's do an experiment. Normally, I'd only do this with property agents, but anyone can take part in this. We recently bought a 32,000 square foot building in Hooley Hill Road in Edinburgh for £1.9 million. I'm going to offer a £25,000 finder's fee to anyone who introduces me to a suitable tenant. You heard me, you'll need an introducer's contract pack, so make sure you download it from the link in the comments. You might think I've lost it by offering that much, but let's take a closer look at the maths. The current value of the building, remember, that's it vacant, is 1.9 million. If we get a half decent tenant at our asking rent of 200,000, the yield could be around 8% or perhaps even better, which puts a value of 2.5 million on the building. Our retained agents normally charge us 10% of the quoting rent, but by offering an incentive, we're speeding the process up. For the avoidance of doubt, even if the tenant was introduced to us by a third party, as in the above example, we would still pay our retained agents. If you want to see a real life example of investment values, have a look at our reinvestment on Gorgie Road, which is featured in the previous video in this series. What are you waiting for? Download an introducer's pack, get your brain in gear, and see if you can introduce a tenant to me for £25,000. How else do we promote our assets? Well, I'm a fan of innovative marketing solutions. The most essential part of marketing is to take advantage of technology. It's simply not enough to stick to boring old brochures for a property. You need to think outside the box. Remember Project Contempo? When I was trying to gauge interest, I did a spoof video for LinkedIn of Donald Trump trying to buy it from me and the video alone resulted in 90 letting inquiries. You don't need to do spoof videos, but good quality videos are essential. Have a look at these previous videos of ours. There's a selection popping up on your screen. They're a great way of getting your message across than a brochure. Your marketing toolbox isn't complete without video marketing. 
Statistics show that 51.9% of marketing professionals worldwide name video as the type of content with the best return on investment, while 76% of business-to-business -business marketers say it helped them increase sales. Next step, you have to build a brand. A couple of years ago, we bought an almost vacant industrial estate in central Scotland for £400,000. This was a real basket case asset. There were a few odd things that stood out about this place. We couldn't find it online. It seemed to have several names and the location was contradictory. Even while we were doing due diligence in the purchase, we had already started the rebranding process. The first thing we did was to rename the estate to Bowmains Industrial Estate. It seemed the most obvious thing to do. If we couldn't find it, what hope did potential tenants have? Naming the property makes it more well known and will increase its value. I'd advise you to do your research when it comes to coming up with a suitable name. Consider the local area, community and history. Once you've sorted out a name, think of your branding. The first thing most people will see when they come to the building or industrial estate is your branding. Update or repair your signage. Make sure it's not obscured from the road or difficult to read. Keep your signage up to date and consider different sign styles, materials, sizes and placements. Of course, no marketing strategy is complete without a website. As simple as it sounds, I know loads of industrial estates that don't have one. It's crazy. A website is a calling card that will help promote available buildings, services and other key advantages to prospective tenants. Plus, once a tenant is in, it will help make finding the estate easier, encouraging footfall if required. I'm not going to talk too much about this estate in this video, as I'm using it as a case study for a future video. But suffice to say, we made a 68% return on our investment within 14 months. You really should watch this case study when it goes live on my YouTube channel in a couple of weeks, so hit that subscribe button and notification bell. If you want to know more about building brands, I have several videos on the subject on this channel. There's again a description in the comments, so take a look. The final part of my stabilisation of assets looks at cost cutting measures. Again, this could do with a video dedicated solely to my techniques, but we'll have a quick look at Bowmains Industrial Estate again. This estate had a very high turnover of tenants, and the two things that stood out were legal costs and agents fees. Let's take these separately. Agents are typically paid between 7.5 and 12.5% of the first year's rent. Bearing in mind the average tenant was in the estate for around a year, we had to find a solution for reducing this. The idea was simple. We built a website for the estate even before we purchased it. By the time we had acquired it, the website had generated sufficient leads for us to have the estate full within weeks of acquisition. The best thing was, our cost of client acquisition was nil. When it came to legal costs, the key factor that decreased them was to stop issuing leases and instead adopt a simple, non-negotiable two-page license. A license to occupy is generally only appropriate for short-term letting arrangements. So that's how we take the first steps of stabilising assets when we buy basket case properties. Aggressive leasing, innovative marketing and cost cutting are all part of a tried and trusted method that I've used for nearly two decades. In this period of time, I've done over 500 million worth of property deals, so I know what I'm talking about. Want a piece of the action? Then don't miss the next steps on my asset management, commercial property, business model videos. Hit that subscribe button for my free YouTube channel and the notification bell and you'll be kept bang up to date. Let me know what you think and get in touch if you reckon you've got a chance of bagging my £25,000 finder's fee.